here selling art and showing art, and uh, it is special. They'll see a lot of jewelry, a lot of pottery, metal sculptures, yard sculptures. You got your painters, your acrylics, your watercolor, mixed media. There's good art out there. Where else can you run into 60,000 people in two days and get your name out? It's just a constant flow of people, and it's people from two years old probably into their 90s. The, the Lexington Art League is, is Lexington's only, if not main, visual arts association. We promote visual arts throughout the community and the region. This started in 1975. It's grown from just local artists to regional uh, artists, people from all over the southeast. Remember in the early days, we just had the one strip of, of down the, I call it the main drag of Woodland Park. And the artist kind of came out and set up. And we didn't have, at that time, there weren't tents. The, the, we just kind of winged it, you know. We brought our stuff down. If it rained, we covered it up with a tarp. They've added the music now all through the park at different times. You might hear somebody picking and singing uh, in, I call it the back 40 here, as well as in the, uh, you know, the gazebo there. The focus of the weekend is, is supporting individual artists and in the creation of their work. So we're supporting 200 small businesses right now. And then also we have a whole space dedicated to community engagement, kids' hands-on arts activities for kids. And to fulfill that need, we engage other nonprofits. We let them come into the Woodland Art Fair, do activities with kids, and then they also get to pass up their materials for that work. Oh, it smells like curry over here. So directly behind us, we're working on an interactive art installation that will be created throughout the weekend as part of the 40th anniversary of the Woodland Art Fair. So we thought we would see if people would make a donation, leave a wish for us, I and mean, by the end of the weekend we'll have a beautiful piece of art that will fill hopefully the whole under canopy of the tree. The artists are selling work. There are a lot of artists this year in particular that have been saying selling better than they have in the past. And that's vital. I mean that's really vital to the economic impact of what the Art League can do for sure. We can show art, we can invite people to come and see art, but to have people come here to Woodland is so nice because people are buying the work, artists are leaving happy, and everybody wins. We believe art makes people feel better, and it helps in the healing process, so this was a really good fit for us. Um, it's a nice chance for us to come out and just do some fun things with the community, and we're all on the same page. We're trying to help people, and, and that's really what it's about for us. So the Big Ten is a program that we're really proud of, and we, we've really loved developing that. It's about three years old, and what we wanted to do is we wanted to give emerging artists an opportunity to come and sell at a large fine art and craft fair. We kind of brainstormed this idea of asking local artists who have never done the Woodland Art Fair before to become a part of this big tent just so they can experience the fair without investing a lot. So you get like a taste test of what the crowds and the vibe are. We did it three years ago for the first time and we were sold. The Lexington Art League selects four artists from the city that have never participated in the fair before and puts them up in their booth. So I started working with leather when I was in college and uh, it's developed into a full-time focus. I work with uh, a lot of natural dyes uh, and everything is handmade, hand-sewn. Anything that can be done in-house is. Uh, we're Dronex Inc. It's our sort of like uh, pseudo corporate identity that umbrellas over kind of all the stuff that we create, you know, because we do like printmaking, 3D stuff, 2D stuff. I don't know, the drone kind of started as this three dimensional figure, um, kind of born on a pottery wheel of all places, like this kind of big bowling pin looking thing. We do all our own um, sticker printing, screen printing, t shirts, like everything is in house. You're able to reach a cross audience much more readily than you could individually. It's a good opportunity to get your foot in the door and kind of see what the art fair is kind of like really, really about. This is a very visible amount of people that I'm reaching and, 
and afternoon and again tomorrow. Well, I would say if you've never done the Woodland Art Fair before, get in touch with the Lexington Art League to possibly become a Big Ten artist. It's a great way to not invest a lot and know that you belong in this environment. I mean, all artists want people to buy their art, so. <laughs> so it's great to continue teaching artists at different levels of their careers. It would be impossible to replace this. It just wouldn't work. I mean, this has 40 years of history. It has such a community draw that I don't know any way you could replace it. It would harm the Art League tremendously if, if this event didn't go on every year. So again, it's not just money, it's exposure to people, it's exposure for artists. I can't imagine that the artists um, would be able to replace this with anything else. I think our community looks forward to this event every year. It's become kind of this staple event that everybody looks forward to. The economic impact of the Woodland Art Fair is so substantial, so it would drastically impact the local surrounding businesses as well. Take a group of people, go into the, the city offices, go into the mayor's office, take all the art out of there. What would happen to their environment if all their art was gone? And I think immediately uh, they would see, we would all see, all this stuff that I live with every day is now suddenly gone. Uh, we don't think about it all the time. And if, if all of this disappeared, it would be about the same kind of thing. If the Woodland Art Fair didn't happen, that we would have an exodus, that we would have uh, artists and consumers going elsewhere. It's one of the best shows of the year for us and I know a lot of these artists depend on shows like this to make a living so not to have that as an artist would be a big blow it would be a big blow you know we started as a group of artists a group of um, people with like minds people that wanted a place to show their work to grow together as a community um, and what's evolved over our almost 60 years of history is just truly miraculous. Lexington has so many wonderful artists and, and artistic people, um, but a lot of people don't realize that there's this organization in town that's here to support that. Participating in the arts community is the easiest thing you can do in Lexington because we are so blessed to have such a vibrant arts community. Art matters on so many levels in this community. To the artists, for their mode of expression, uh, to the consumers for their love and beauty of the art. Art is such a reflection of what happens in our world, in our society, and there's no other way really you can see this broad and expanse of how it does that than something like an art fair. This work is a reflection of artists who are working today, and that's the space that we provide. <laughs>